guys ready? Welcome to <laughs> Let's Make Art. <laughs> that is so good. Will you sing that Maybe every jingle. Tuesday? Please? I know you love to paint, but you don't have time, so you come on down to the side of the night. Oh, that was just, that was one of the greatest. It's always That was beautiful. It's so great. That's our new theme song. Thank you, Al. He will be singing that live every Tuesday night, so tune in just for that. Okay, welcome, you guys, to Let's Make Art. We like to watercolor, uh, and hopefully you do too, and that's why you're here painting with us. We are super excited. We're doing this cute little barn landscape. Look, oh, look at the glory. Look at the fields. It's great, yeah, glory of, of you know, earth. <laughs> it's great, nature, trees, it's great. Uh, we have a couple new people with us here today. We have Ryan who's painting, so welcome Ryan. And we have Allie who's painting. And Allie is also like uh, an employee of, of ours. She's like our first real one. And so that's why her hands are covered in paint <laughs> like, I don't know because we are pouring paint bottles every day for your <laughs> subs. So it's great. I'm so glad you guys are here. I'm really excited. I don't know that you can say first real employee. We've got Casey. Oh, Casey. We've got Ella. Oh, it's really hard. Right. Oh my gosh, Casey, I mean, There Ella. are people that have given their okay. souls. Okay, you know what? Strike that. Okay, she is our third. Our, one of our favorites. But <laughs> top three. She's a top five, actually. Let's say top five. Let's be safe. Because uh, there might be some. I can't believe I forgot about those guys. I'm so sorry. Okay. She's our first one. I like, we've never had any help before. There's like 20 people that are like, are you serious? <laughs> okay, anyways, we're focusing, we're painting. Um, for this project, we have five colors. We have true blue for our sky. We have scarlet for our barn. We have golden brown for our field. We're sending away baby porter. <laughs> baby porter is leaving. Bye, porter. Bye. Bye, Dre. Bye. We have black. And we have olive green. Sorry. <laughs> for our trees and bushes. I forgot. <laughs> Bye. He wants to paint so He's so bad. sad. He's leaving. <laughs> okay. And the brushes we're using are round six and round two. <laughs> he got so mad so quick. We're using round six, round two. Um, that's what I use for this. If you also have a larger brush, uh, like a round 10, that might be helpful for this project. Totally not necessary, but if you do have one, you might want to keep it handy. Sometimes it's nice to have those larger brushes. Who's baby? Al's baby. That's Al's <laughs> little baby porter there. Um, Okay, we have colors, we have paintbrushes. I also gave us extra paper towel because we're gonna dab to make our clouds. So have two pieces of paper towel we're handy. Dab, we're not. <laughs> we're gonna dab. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not even gonna try, I'm not gonna embarrass myself. I'm no longer that young. Okay. That is a mom reaction. <laughs> <laughs> yes, 100%. Um, okay, before we get started into our warm ups. We're gonna take an oath. So everybody raise your right hand. I didn't sign up for this. Oh, die. yes you did. <laughs> oh, and no. you're gonna repeat after me, which is, I promise to be kind to myself. I promise, I promise to be, to be kind, kind to myself. myself. I promise to have fun. I promise to have fun. And I promise not to compare my work with somebody else's. And I do hereby promise to never compare this work herein. Okay, okay, you guys got it? Close enough. I said it all. Okay, good. I said half. That's good. I forgot. <laughs> so uh, we just like to do that because some of us are just trying this and we kind of get all uptight when we're trying new things and we get worried and we're nervous and you have to remember that this is just about fun. This is just about relaxing and exploring and trying something new and maybe, you know, learning something at the same time. So we, I just want you guys to like take a deep breath and relax about this because this is just about fun. So yeah, here we go. <laughs> Wait, did you already say what brushes? Yes, round six and round two are our... And we use the Princeton 4050. Princeton Heritage Series 4050. Round six, round two. You can also and get those. 
Addie's wondering a lot of things. Just go to the website. Addie, just go to letsmakeart.com. <laughs> click on products. We got you, girl. Okay. Also, if you have around 10, have that handy too. Um, but totally not necessary. Anyways, let's do our warm ups, okay? And can you put the tray on the other side? Oh, yes. If you may. Uh, okay. Yeah, let's give let's give that to Allie okay. then. There you go. Okay, is that good? Yeah, bring it this way. This way? Oh, you weren't talking to me. <laughs> <laughs> well, there you go. Good? Okay. Okay, we'll share. Okay, so for your warm-ups, we are going to do a couple of things. And if you're new to watercolor, what you have to remember with watercolor is water is just as important as the paint. You're using water as part of the medium. You're not just using it to rinse your brush as you would in acrylic paint, that kind of thing. So keep that in mind. Um, we're gonna do some washes today. And washes is just when you're putting paint and water down simultaneously. So you can have a light wash or a medium wash or a dark wash. And it just depends on how much water you have um, will tell if it's light. So if you want your wash to be lighter, you have more water than paint. If you want your wash to be darker, then you use mostly paint. Make sense? Okay, so we're gonna do a light and a medium and a dark wash. So let's start with the dark. Just pick up a brush, any brush you wanna use. Grab, I think we're using the same brush. Take grab a, brush. a color, <laughs> any brush, any of the brushes you have. Grab some paint, any colors you want. And I'm gonna start with my dark wash because I'm gonna pick up a lot of paint. So there's gonna be mostly paint in the belly of my brush. And I'm just gonna do a square, just an even square. And paint that back and forth. And how you get it even is you just kind of work back and forth on it. And that should even out. Yeah, if it's light, then you just, uh-huh, and then pick up some more color and just layer it right on top. That's great. That's now, if, you're, if you start to do this, and uh, let's say you go, see how that's kind of a rough texture? That means you do not have enough water on your paintbrush. So you just kind of get your paintbrush wet, kind of hit off the side, pick up a little bit more paint. Oh, that's still too dry. There. So we want like a smooth uh, line. So then we're gonna do our medium wash. So I'm gonna get my brush wet. I'm gonna pick up some paint, but not as much paint as my first round because I want it to be lighter. And I'm just going to see how this color is already lighter than this. This is our medium wash. It just has to be lighter in value. Oh. Well, just get it more, <laughs> yeah, and just get, just use water. Just use water? Just use water to blend that out and even it out. Got it. Yep. Oh, that's looking a lot better. Yep. <laughs> perfect, I perfect. It's too light. No, it's not too light. This is great. You guys are doing great. And you just work it kind of back and forth. And that's, that's a medium. And, um, and then for our lightest wash, you're basically going to use mostly water and just like a touch of paint. And it's going to be barely there. It's going to be like a barely there wash, but that <laughs> is good. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, it is. It's very light, but that's exactly what we want because this is all one paint color, but just using the amount of water changing that, we get three different colors right here, which is the amazing thing about watercolor that I love. Yep. You seem pretty cocky tonight. I'm just feeling, <laughs> I'm just feeling so good. I'm like, this is so fun. Okay. So we have our dark, our medium, and our light. The next thing that we're gonna practice is going from a dark to light in one area. So we want a value change. Basically, this is just gonna be connected going dark to light. Mm -hmm. And how you do that is you get your brush, you kind of hit it off the side so it's not totally dripping. You're gonna pick up a bunch of paint, whatever color you want. And I'm gonna make my dark area. And then I'm gonna rinse my brush, hit it off the side, and right where I left off, I'm just gonna swoop that back and forth. And it will, that color will automatically move across that water. Yep. <laughs> yep, keep rinsing and start right there and move across. Look, there it is. Yeah. <laughs> Sometimes you have to rinse your brush twice um, because maybe you, you like added the water and you're like, that's still not super light. Then just rinse your brush again and you know, just keep on going until the color is barely there. 
Now, when you do this, when you go from dark to light, you basically want to leave it um, alone. Like you don't want to go back over the dark area because let me show you why. Like, let's say I have this nice dark to light value wash right here, but if I did this, and there it goes. Actually, it's going to go away. <laughs> it wasn't you were right, Ryan. You were right. You nailed it. I'm jumping the gun here. No, it's perfect. <laughs> so if you work, <laughs> <laughs> so if you work it back and forth over and over, you're going to lose that value change and it's all going to become one value. Mm -hmm. Which, if we want an even it's wash, surprisingly good job of holding its value. <laughs> it did, it did, but you know what? It still proved my point. I feel so we're okay. <laughs> so oh, it's fine. <laughs> the one time you wanted, the one time I'm like move. <laughs> so um, just keep that in mind. If you want the value to be even, you just keep on working that sucker. If you want it a nice dark to light, then you don't want to mess with going back and forth too much because then it's you're gonna lose that. Okay? Okay. Say okay. 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 <laughs> All right. The next thing that we're going to do for our warm up is we are going to practice the technique that we're using for our sky. So, what I want you to do is I want you to just grab water. So, you're just going to take your brush, pick up water. This one can be dripping because we're going to put a lot of water on our paper. I'm just going to have you pick up water and do like um, get one area like a rectangle wet and then while it's still wet you're going to grab blue and work and uh, add that to your water kind of work it back and forth mm. yeah put it in and then I want you to pick up your paper and um, move your paper up and down and back around and let that paint move yeah and it's going to drip um, hopefully there's if there's too much water on your paper, then it's going to puddle and it's going to actually drip all the way across your page. So um, just kind of be aware of that as we're doing our sky because we don't want it to have that much water where it puddles and then starts to stream down. We want the paint to stay within our water. So it's kind of like a balance trying to figure out how much paint. Yeah, yeah, move that guy all around. Great. <laughs> lost it a little bit. No, that's great. Because what, we, what we're going to do with our sky is we're essentially going to do that where we're going to get our entire sky wet. We're going to put in blue at the top, move it around so it spreads, and then we're going to put in our clouds. Um, should we practice putting in our clouds? You guys want to? Yeah, let's practice that technique before we get going. So same thing. I want you to get area, because this might be too dry now. So the main thing with the sky and this technique is you got to work fast. You got to just like do it, do it, do it. Because the longer you wait for it to dry, then the paint's not going to spread. And when you use your paper towel, it's not going to pick up as much color because it would have seeped into the paper. So just get some water, get an area wet. Now we're going to be doing this bigger on our sky. So keep that in mind. Then you're going to drop in the blue. You maybe help it move down a little bit and then you're going to lift up, bring that guy all around to try. And the reason for doing this is sometimes even when you move back and forth on your paper with your uh, brush, you'll still get brush strokes and we're trying to not get brush strokes. And then you're going to up, pick up your paper towel and kind of wrap it around your finger and then just blot in the blue and make clouds. So there's a little cloud, there's another little cloud, there's another little cloud. Yes! Excellent! <laughs> no! Go girl! Here wait, let me, I'm going to spread this out a little bit for you. I'm going to help it. Oh that's nice! So you're just, gonna, you're just gonna kind of help it sometimes if it's not moving like you want it to. Right. And then you can kind of be like, oh, okay, even out, take out those brush strokes. Smart. Now pick it up with your paper towel. Some cloud shapes. That's so cool. Isn't it so cool? Like <laughs> Great. Yeah, beautiful. Can you just do clouds all day? Yes. Literally. <laughs> we can just do clouds all day. In fact, I did when prepping for this project. Originally this project was just going to be a blue sky with clouds and I did like 10 of them. And then I'm like, you know what? That's actually not super interesting. <laughs> <laughs> let's so let's put in, let's put in a landscape. Okay. Um, 
feel like I, we're ready. I feel like we're ready too. So put your scratch paper aside. You're welcome to keep that handy. A record number of people watching today. We do? Like 85 people. You guys wow. are so great. That makes me so happy. <laughs> yes, yeah. yeah. Okay. Peel that sucker right off. There you go. Old piece of paper. Okay. You guys ready? We're doing this in five steps. I wish, where's my, my notes Where? are over there. So Where? I'm just gonna, Wait, I'm just gonna wing it. Cam right here? Where? Five steps. Five steps, <laughs> wait, no, five. <laughs> Step one, we're gonna put in our sky. Step, our sky slash clouds. Step two, we are putting in our uh, field of glory. Step three, we're putting in our is the road step three? You guys help me out out there. I'm pretty sure the road is step three. Sorry, I don't have my notes in front of me. Um, and then we're gonna put in our barn with our trees and then the details. I think you got barn and uh, road. Did I? Is road step four? Well, because you gotta wait for it to dry, you know? Okay, it's the, fine. Okay. <laughs> okay, okay, okay. You're right, Al. You are right. I stared at it a long time. <laughs> Okay, so let's start with our sky. Now, as you can see in our um, example here, I don't have like a strong edge. I kind of just like let it slide off. Um, you know, I kind of just like brushed it. So it kind of has this rough, I like that look. If you don't like that look, you are welcome to use tape. So you get like a nice sharp uh, line painter's tape, I would suggest. Um, but I'm just gonna go for it. And so are you guys, okay? <laughs> So go ahead and get your brush. I'm gonna move to a 10 to do my sky, but um, again, I did do this with a six, so if you have a six, that's totally fine. Just the bigger brush are, brush, brushes are easier when you're doing larger spaces. Bigger brushes are easier, okay. So I'm just getting water, and I'm just gonna go, um, I would say, like a little over half on my paper is going to be sky. So like this, this nice chunk right here is gonna be sky. So you just kind of envision that area. And we're gonna add water. Does it matter what direction you put it on? Uh, no, I usually go horizontal um, because uh, we want the sky to read. This is a horizontal landscape. So sometimes it's easier to have the brush stroke stay in line with what the feel is of the painting, if that makes any sense. Okay, so I have a nice wet sky, nice and watery. I'm gonna grab my blue, drop it in at the top, help it kind of move down. And then I'm gonna pick up my paper and just um, try and get rid of those brush strokes. Try and even out those things. Now you're probably gonna get, you know, little interesting washes, little interesting textures going on. Embrace those, <laughs> love them. Got a little dribble over here. Yeah, that's okay. <laughs> Mine dribbled a little too. Okay, and while it's still wet, do your clouds. So this is what I have a nice dark to light. I'm gonna start putting in my clouds. Now when you do your clouds, you don't want the perimeter of them to all have the same roundness. So kind of let your finger like lay down in a couple areas so you get like a, a bigger area. Does that make sense? We don't want all the bumps to be the same size. So kind of play with, and I always like to have my clouds kind of thin out at the end, but clouds are all shapes and sizes, so there's not really a thing that you can do that would be wrong. Okay. No, that's fine. So what you can do here, Ryan, is if, if it's just not spreading, just take your brush and help it move. Okay. Help it move down and then yeah, and then move it across. And now you have more of an even coloring. It's a lot more beautiful. Okay, that's great. Now you wanna put in your clouds. If you wait too long to put in your clouds, then the pigment is gonna soak into the paper and it's gonna be harder to lift out. So they just won't be as white. Yeah, there we go. Very good. Yeah, that looks great. <laughs> They're so funny looking. <laughs> that one looks like a horse. 
<laughs> or a dog. Like, like with those it. long, yeah, that's great. I'd rather go cloud gazing on this little pig pearl. Yeah. Yeah, and you can use the edge here like Ryan is to get like some thin wispies. Ooh, <laughs> that's cool. <laughs> some wispies going on. Great. Now that sky is quick. We put that sucker in real fast. So hopefully you guys are feeling good about it, but it is a really quick process. <laughs> so we're done with step one. That's it. Step one is done. Good job, you guys. Step one is done. Okay. Now we're going to move on to step two, which is our field. Now the thing with our field that you want to keep in mind, the warm up that we did where we went from dark to light, that's essentially what we're gonna be doing in our field, is we want the top part to be darker and then as it goes down, it's just gonna get lighter. And whenever you're doing landscapes, the biggest way to communicate depth and space is if there is value change. If we were to make our grass area all the same value right here, and it didn't get lighter as we went down, it would read as flat. That's how things read as flat when you're painting it anything in, in any medium. So you wanna make sure that it's darker on the edge and it gets lighter as it goes down. And I'm gonna switch over to, I took, I think it was Ruth's, who was just like, why don't you have two cups of water? And I'm like, you're so smart. So I have clean cups of water, extra that we can pull from. You can share with me, Ryan, because I only did two extra. And, um, I'm going to pick up some golden brown and I'm going to grab a tiny bit of black to mix in there because uh, this golden brown is a really powerful yellow um, when it's like has water added to it and I'm just toning it down just a little bit with the black. And I'm going to, when I put in this field for step two, I'm gonna leave a tiny bit of space. I'm not gonna to touch my sky with it because our sky is most likely still wet. And we don't want that golden brown to touch that sky because then it would just kind of bleed right into our sky. And we don't want that. So I just left a little thin white space in between. And we're gonna put bushes and stuff on that horizon line anyway, so we're gonna cover it up. So don't stress about that. So. Remember, we're gonna start with strong color. So we're gonna have lots of paint when we pick it up. And we're also going to leave like a road in here. It's, I'm just gonna do an angle in here. You guys can choose you know, how extreme your angles are, but we're gonna put a road in later. So we're gonna kind of just leave an angled part over here empty, okay? So I'm putting in my road. I'm gonna start with my dark first, this dark, and then I just rinse my brush and spread out that color that I already laid down. And here is the road I'm leaving in. So I have an angle going off here for the road. Yes, very nice. And I'm gonna do one more layer on top of that of the same thing. Now, uh, if you're looking at my painting, I want it to be lighter in the front than it is right now, and you can actually lift paint off your paper. You just take your brush, get it damp, just with water, no paint, and I'm literally gonna lift the color off of the paper and then pat my paper towel dry. So I'm lifting. So if you're going for that value change and you're like, man, it's still dark at that bottom, you want it to be lighter, then you can go ahead and just lift up that color just using water. It's not gonna totally erase it, but it is gonna lighten it up. I gotta be honest, I completely forgot about that road. <laughs> so, that's okay that's okay it's gonna be at a pretty it's, a, it's a pretty extreme angle I'm <laughs> that's all right that's all right we're all gonna be different okay oh my gosh I love these colors so much every time I paint this I just get happy <laughs> yeah, my okay be born different. That's okay. <laughs> we all take different roads. <laughs> <laughs> so what 
we're here Long for. Long setup for that. Okay, now we do the road, right? That's step three. Yeah. Yeah. Uh -oh. Yeah. No, don't, don't, right, yeah. you're, you're fine, you're fine. Okay, so for our road, we're, I'm just gonna take a little bit of the black to get like this gray color. And maybe if you want to introduce a little bit more color and you don't want it just gray, you could add a teeny bit of the golden brown. Um, but like, I kind of like this grayish color that I have going on here. It's pretty. And it's just gonna be a very light wash. So make sure you have lots of water on your brush. It's gonna be very light. We're just gonna kind of fill in this area. And I'm actually gonna make mine more gray because you want it to be a different color than your field, if you can. Does that color look about good? How do you make it more gray? Uh, I'm just using black. So if you want it to be just gray, only use black and add, just add water to it to lighten that up and you're gonna get a gray. Uh, if it's still not reading, you can add a little bit of, a, of blue. And that will give it, give it a different color also. And you go all the way to the edge with the field or no? So I'm going, yeah. So you kind of like meet a little bit. If you have a little bit of white space, that's okay. Mm -hmm. um, don't stress too much about it. Okay. My round is just going to turn. Okay. Have a slight curve. Love it. <laughs> so <curvature>. cute. <laughs> Maybe put grass there later. And this is such a light wash. This one I'm not as concerned about in terms of getting a strong value change. Since we are using black, we don't want like a black ridge at the top <laughs> to move down because that would just be too strong of a, of a color contrast. It's really ominous. Yes. It'd be like, <laughs> that is a dark road ahead. A dark road ahead. <laughs> What brush are you on? I'm still using my six. So we're going to use round six for most of this. I think we'll switch to it. We'll switch to a two when we do our barn and our trees and our details. But so far, we're just using our six. Yes, very nice. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Beautiful, beautiful. And you can always, let's say you put in your road and you're like, I don't love this angle. You can always rework it and um, kind of just do another, after it dries, you can do an, another field layer on top and adjust that angle. So let's say I actually wanted more yellow to be over on top here and the angle to cut in this way. You can just do another layer on top and it will be fine. Deborah's saying watercolors look a little more forgiving Watercolors look a little bit more forgiving. Like for newbies? Yes. Well, some people are really intimidated by watercolor because um, with acrylic or oil, you can once it dries, you can always just paint over it and hide whatever you don't like. So in turn, some people are really intimidated by watercolor because once paint is there, you can lighten it, but you cannot erase it. Um, but at the same time, I feel like watercolor has this really great quality where um, it's forgiving in terms of like, accidental art is really great and it's a huge part of it where you're going to get these different textures and different things and that's why I love it so much because it's just like did I mean to do a water drop there no but it got this really cool texture <laughs> and I'm into that so let's do that okay I think we are ready to move on now we're going to put in our red barn and we're gonna put our red barn in right in between the sky and the field. So it's gonna go kind of right in between there. And um, our red barn, we're gonna start with our roof and the light is on top. So our roof itself is a light value because we're gonna imagine that the light is shining right on top of it. And the underneath part is shadowed, which is why it's this darker value. So just switching up those two values is giving your barn shape. If we were to leave this all one value, the same red, then it, would, it wouldn't have as much form. But because we have a light value roof, a dark value under, we're like, oh, okay, that has <laughs> shape and form and that kind of thing. Did we decide on what shape this was? It's a trapezoid. That's right. That's right. Yeah, yeah. I said a rhombus. You said a parallelogram. I don't think it's a parallelogram because um, I... I, I it's a parallelogram. What? Rhombus has four <laughs> equal sides. Okay, but a trap. I think. No, a trapezoid has 
that same kind of curved, but it's rectangular, so it has longer sides on the top and bottom. Is the... Let me Google. Okay, we're Googling. <laughs> Anyways, um, I was wrong on the step out, okay? I put rhombus, <laughs> and I was wrong, and I'm sorry. It's a stretched out rhombus. It's a parallelogram. It's a parallelogram? <laughs> Are you sure? Yeah. I'm going to call it a diamond. I really love diamonds. Listen, I'm just good at art, okay? I'm not good at shapes. I'm really sorry. <laughs> it's geometry. <day. laughs> so for the roof, you want to make sure that your field and your sky is dry before you add any of this. So if it's not dry yet, don't do this step. You just got to wait. I'm really sorry. Because um, if it's wet, you're going to touch that red in there and it's going to go everywhere. It's going to go crazy. So I just kind of pat it. That's how I tell if something is dry. I just kind of, I just touch it. <laughs> Should you touch it? I don't know, but that's what I do. Okay. Is it the right thing to do? Is it the right thing? Am I supposed to be teaching you the right thing? No, I'm just kidding. So for when I put my roof in, it's a, wait, what was it? Parallelogram? Okay. I forgot. I'm so sorry. I'm so sorry, you guys. I'm going to put it in. It's going to kind of hit both. It's going to go over both the sky and the field. So um, you can make it as big or as small as you want. I'm going to start out small in my tutorial I filmed for this, it kind of came out big, so I'm going to try and focus on staying small. I switched to my two, um, and so you just kind of outline it. So I'm going to do my little roof. So you're going to put in your angled line, you're going to put make the sides longer, and then you want the back angle to match that front angle if you can. Have that be kind of the same degree of angle, this. It's fine. I know what I'm talking about. It's amazing. Okay. And then you just fill it in. Mom says it's a roof shape. It's a roof <laughs> shape. Yes. Jenny, I love the way you think. Yep. And then fill it in just with red. What size brush are you? Oh, we're using the two. But if you still want to use your four or your six, do whatever feels right to you, Allie. Okay. This is your <laughs> painting. Yeah. I'm going to use the two. Okay. <laughs> so there is a little bit of freehand drawing in here, but you oh. guys can do this. You can do it. Um, sometimes it's easier to make a straight line for me if I turn my paper actually up and down. And then I just kind of work from there. You just want to try and keep those lines straight. But just do the best you can. Mm -hmm. Great. And then I'm going to do the other side of um, the roof. So the front part here, the opening is going to look like a triangle. I'm just going to put in the other side of the roof here. Just like that. Oh, this one came in a little bit bigger too. That's OK. <laughs> I just can't do small. It's fine. It's fine. You're like Larry Bird trying to miss a free throw. I wish I, wish I knew <laughs> sports <laughs> references at all. <laughs> <laughs> Great. Good job, you guys. That's it. That's our roof. All right. Woo! I can breathe. Do you add any extra Three or four. We're on step four right now. We we're are rusty. flying through this painting. Miss all you guys when we're done. I know. This is such a good time. Okay. So for the underneath part of our barn, it's got to be darker in color. So there's two things you can do. Well, I'm going to add two colors to it to darken it. One, I'm going to add a little bit of green. Green and red are complementary colors, okay? I never believed that. It's a true, it's a <laughs> fact. You don't have to believe it, because it's true. Um, so complementary colors are really wonderful. If you mix them together, you usually always get a brown. Um, and they're a great way to tone down one color. So like if I'm doing pet portraits and I like make a nose on a dog too red, I just grab a little bit of green and put that on top and it totally tones down the red. If you're into makeup, it's that same kind of thing where if you have like a red zit, you get a green stick and you, I don't know if you guys are into that, but that's a thing. Okay. I don't understand the sports references, but I do so. understand that. <laughs> so Allie's like, makeup I references, I am there. And then I'm gonna add a little bit of black to that as well, just to- <laughs> Sally, I love the way you think. Done. We're not going to talk about shapes anymore. <laughs> so I added a little bit of black to it to kind of darken it up even more. Um, and then I'm just going to go in and on this roof edge all the way to the right, I'm going to 
put a straight line down to be the, you know, the body of the roof, but I'm gonna bring it in from the roof a little bit because if you look at houses or whatever, roofs always go off the uh, frame a little bit. They're always a little bit longer, most of the time. Mm -hmm. uh, so I'm just gonna go straight down from that and have a little, see I have a little roof hanging off. Well, and I'm gonna mix in a little bit more color because mine wasn't dark enough. I was trying to make my own barn color. I just got black. <laughs> <laughs> black works, it's fine. So, okay, now I have a darker, you just wanna make sure the color is darker to make it clear that um, it's shadowed, the roof itself is shadowing the barn. So I have my straight line down here. I'm gonna do the same thing on the other side. And remember to go in a little bit, that roof is gonna stick out a little bit more than the body of the barn. And then I just fill it in. Now, when I get to the bottom part of this barn right here, I'm not gonna fill that all the way in because I'm gonna put bushes here. And if I do a really dark color and then try and put green on top, since watercolor is transparent, that green's not gonna show up, right? Because we have like almost a black underneath. So I'm mainly just doing like the top, like right underneath the roof part. So I'll just do the front like that. And then I'm just gonna go to like here. See how I'm leaving this kind of like area? I'm not filling that all the way down because I'm gonna put bushes there. And I don't want my bushes, I want you to see the bushes by the barn. Yeah, very nice. Come see the bushes by the barn. Come see the bushes by the barn. And this is always a great um, part. Um, you can always do, like people have already painted this and posted it, which is great. And some people have done little details on their barns, on the roofs where they've taken like a darker color and just done little like um, almost hash marks across. You're welcome to do that. Um, you can do the same thing on the front of the barn if you want to um, do like textural. It's totally up to you. I just left it. Um, simple two even washes um, just to keep it on the more simple side but you know this is your painting feel free to experiment feel free to play <laughs> Sally just did a roof backwards <laughs> <laughs> all right <laughs> <laughs> so it's just facing the other way yeah. that's okay barns can face face either way can they they can I feel I believe you believe me yes okay great I mean, I don't have a barn, so I'm only this one. <laughs> I mean, I don't have a barn, but I'm sure it's a thing. <laughs> I'm sure. Okay, now we're gonna put in basically just foliage. Um, they can be trees, they can be, I think I kept mine more bushes, and they're really gestural, and um, they're not super detailed, and um, sometimes it's fun to kind of switch it up from a super detailed painting to kind of more gestural. Um, so for that, I'm gonna take my green, and a little bit of black to darken it up. So I have a dark green, and basically what we want with these bushes or the foliage that we have going on here is we want the underneath parts of them to be darker and the top parts of them to be lighter because it's the same thing, our light source is coming from the top. So a bush, the top part would be highlighted from the sun, the underneath part is going underneath around the bush, so it is shadowed, that sun is not hitting it. So I like to just put down, um, like I just do kind of circular kind of dashes, make sure it's nice and dark. And then I just rinse my brush, grab some clean green and put some on the top there. Ooh. <laughs> just like that. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> so now we have like a value change within our bush, right? We have a dark bottom and a light top. And remember this is, this is more loose. Um, you can have your bushes be kind of any shape. It might bleed into your barn a little bit. I say that's okay. I'm telling you it's okay, so it's okay. <laughs> I don't have a barn, but I believe it. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm gonna do the same thing. I'm just gonna add bushes kind of around my barn and then across this horizon line here. So um, kind of in the back here. Just kind of circular dashes on the bottom, 
rinse your brush, get some nice clean green, and do the top part. Now these colors are kind of going to bleed together and mix a little bit because they're two wet things touching. That's okay. What's the name of my band? Two wet things touching. <laughs> oh my god! No more of that. Al. <laughs> we were in high school. We were in high school, is that what you said? <laughs> okay, and I'm just gonna keep going with these things. We played folk rock. Folk. <laughs> in a barn. Fitting. In a barn. But the thing with these bushes is, I am having them go on top. So there are going to be some, like obviously the one by the barn here is not going, reaching to my sky, right? It's staying over here. But the ones I'm doing on the horizon line, they are crossing both of those areas, right? The top part is hitting the sky. You guys see what I'm saying mm -hmm. when I say that? Okay. Mm -hmm. And same thing, you want to make sure, like when we did the clouds, we don't want our bushes to be the same circular. You know, sometimes I think when, um, we're first drawing or painting, we just keep everything really symmetrical, like do, 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 right? Whether it's clouds, whether it's bushes, we're like, those are curved lines, those are great. In, in nature though, it's way more random than that, and it's not, you know, that perfectly thing. So, you know, give yourself permission to um, let your bushes be funky shaped. They don't have to be that perfect round cloud shape. And I'm just dropping in a little more dark green to this side here. You can always drop in a little bit more color if you want it to be, if you want to drop in. I'm just going to keep going. You put your bushes where you feel it's right. So I'm doing a one over here. I'll do another little section. How's everyone doing over there, out there? Let me know. Man's barn was just special. Okay, <laughs> I love special <laughs> barns. Uh, Linda hopes the paint is not toxic. She just brush, rinsed her brush in her water. <laughs> <laughs> it's not toxic, right? It is not. It's not toxic, and I for sure have put my paintbrush in my drink, drank my paint water. I've done it all. You are in good company. Julia says, no wonder Al has a baby with his band. <laughs> oh. Julia, you're funny. Julia, Julia wins tonight. That was great. <laughs> Two wet things touch. Two wet things touch. Two wet things touch. Come to Hamilton, Where's go to our else? art store, and we will have a shirt that says that. Just decided <laughs> right now. Okay, so I'm putting my bushes here, but I'm noticing one thing about my painting, which is my bushes are all like the same width. They're like chunk, and chunk, chunk, chunk. I want to not have them be all the same width also. So I'm going to go in and just make some adjust adjustments. I'm going to make this one a little bit longer. Because variation, variation is key, my friends. It's the spice of life. <laughs> it is, <laughs> in all things. There we go, already I'm just like, oh yeah, okay, that feels better. Remember, you promised to do a fence. Oh I yeah, okay, we'll do a six. fence. We're adding step six, you guys, <laughs> fence. And I'll just do just another little one over here. Gosh, I probably should have practiced that before, right now. Is that what you tell if you're a real artist? <laughs> I know, I'm like, pressure is on. All Not right. planned work. It's fine, it's fine. Okay, so I feel good about my bushes. I'm feeling good. I think I might connect these two, actually. I just connected three. That's fine. Connect all of them. Bushes. It's great. You want to check in? Should we check in? Yeah, let's check in. We haven't done that yet. <laughs> Okay, let's start with Allie over here. I'm gonna move this. Can you see her? Yeah. Okay. 
This is great. I love your sky with your clouds. Tell me that doesn't look like a dog right there. It's a horse. Or a let's, horse. Let's talk about Do you see that? <laughs> Do you see that? Oh my God. Yeah, that's amazing. Yeah, that's so great. Love it. <laughs> love it. Okay, so your bushes are looking, I love Wait, the- Leave that flipped over, right? Okay, yeah. So it's looking really nice here. You have two different values for your barn, which is great. That's exactly what we want. I think what we're missing here is the value change on your bushes. Mm -hmm. This is kind of all one thing. So what we can do is we can lighten up the top with just a damp brush and we can just lift up some of this color. That's like magic. Oh it my gosh. It is magic. magic it's the magic of watercolor. <laughs> you just kind of lift that up so that's lighter. And I would actually drop in um, some stronger, just pure green just for like some color, mm -hmm. some strong, vibrant color. So you can do that. Um, that one still kind of has it. You can still lighten it up a little bit if you want. And then when that dries, you can even go in along the bottom and drop in some dark green here just to really make sure that's nice and dark. But as you go along and you do other bushes, just keep that in mind. We want the bottom to be dark and the top to be light. Mm -hmm. Besides that, looking fabulous. Okay, you ready? I guess. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> okay, same thing, turn it around. Yeah, that'd be great. Okay. Sorry, can you hold that for a sec? That's mine. Okay. Um, this is great. I absolutely love this texture he got here on his sky. I think that looks awesome and this is one of the great things with watercolor is it's like, how did you do that? I don't know. So great. Magic. Magic. That's what it is. <laughs> <The> magic. <laughs> we got a great value change right here on our field. Um, your bushes are looking good, nice and irregular, but same thing. I want the top to be a little bit lighter. So I'm just going to go in with a clean, damp brush and just, you're basically almost putting highlights in the top of your bush. Just kind of lightening up those areas because we want that that nice value change going on oh my gosh i didn't even ask if it's okay if i paint on your yeah, painting okay i always forget to ask i'm so sorry mm -hmm. You're fine. okay <laughs> so we're lightening it up that's the only thing i would say to keep in mind light tops dark bottoms for those bushes um but they're looking good Great job. All right. Great job, you guys. We're making art. We're making art. We're doing it. Oh, I've had some splatters. I noticed those, and I think you should just leave them. Because one, I wasn't planning on getting I'm like, there's nothing you can do about <laughs> yeah. it. One, it's a, a bit late, late for that. It's a little too late, and it just adds to it. Maybe it's watercolor. It's, it's just raining. There we go. Green. <laughs> it's just <laughs> raining green. <laughs> okay. So, uh, let's put in a fence, you guys. Let's do it. So I'm going to put a fence in along my road right here. Now the thing with fences that you want to keep in mind is whatever angle your road is, because I'm going to put it along that angle, um, that's where you want to keep that same angle. And a nice, uh, good trick to kind of touch the angle. So if you're, how do I say this? If you're looking at something and you're like, what angle is that? You can literally take your paintbrush and just lay it down and just be like, okay, there's the angle. And then- 17 degrees. 17 degrees, exactly. No, I don't know. But <laughs> like, <laughs> if you're looking at a reference photo or even real life, you can just hold your paintbrush up to it and you just keep that angle and then you transfer it over to whatever paper you're painting on. Um, so paintbrushes or pencils or rulers, that comes in handy in terms of angles. And then the other thing that you wanna keep in mind is as things go farther into the distance, they get smaller. So when we put in our first post here, it's going to be bigger. And then back here, this post is going to be smaller. And that is going to communicate that it's going into the distance. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That's a song I feel, Al. Into the distance. Mm -hmm. or in, I'll go the distance. Yes. Going into the distance. Yes. <laughs> it's a Hercules song. We switched the words up a little bit. It's fine. Okay. So for my fence, <laughs> there you go. Okay, for the fence, I'm gonna use my golden brown. I'm gonna mix in some black and I'm gonna grab some red and that's gonna give it more of a deep brown, a more of a red brown. And that's mainly because I want the color to be different from my field and that's it. 
that's the main thing. <laughs> I want it to be different. Okay, let me just test that. Yeah, and so she always loves my degrees. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think they've ever been right. I'm like, Al, what degree is this? You just 17. Said, Perfect. <laughs> yes, exactly. Okay, so I'm going to start putting in my first post here. Um, now my, my road line is a little, it's not a perfect angle, that's okay. I'm just going to kind of make it as straight as I can. Um, I'm going to put my first post in. A fence is wander. Yeah. So there's my first post. Here's my second post. Here's my next post. And remember this is going to get smaller as it goes. So they get smaller and closer together, is that right? And then it's, it looks like my road curves. That's fine. Curve it. Just bring it on. Okay. So just by switching up the length of our post, fence post, we are communicating. They're like, oh, that's going, that's a deep, that's a deep uh, landscape. You know, it's going deep in there. It's great. Uh, if you want to go that extra mile and add dimension to your fence post. That's a distance joke. <laughs> <laughs> Excuse the pun, but it was great. Um, you can actually, because fen fence posts themselves are probably gonna have a darker and lighter side. So what I would do is I would rinse my brush and just um, using water and the paint that's already there, just add a lighter side to each post and give it just a little bit of dimension. It's not as important as it gets farther away because it's gonna be so far in the distance that you probably wouldn't see that anyway but just give your foot post a little bit of shape. Oh my gosh, I was so nervous to do this, but it's turning out okay. I know, I was like, you didn't practice this? <laughs> <laughs> I forgot that I said yeah, I would do a fence. Everybody's doing the fence with you. Yeah, <laughs> so great. No, I love it. We love fences, We're, we like it. Okay, now for the connecting posts um the wires maybe yeah let's do wires <laughs> sometimes it's sometimes it's actual oh, fence planks. you were thinking planks yeah sometimes i don't know I like we're going to do wires You're not a farm woman yet <laughs> <laughs> i just moved to missouri okay i'm still getting used to it <laughs> so i'm going to start putting in my fence line and i'm just going to um, start having them connect um so I'm going to start kind of at the top here, and I'm just going to move to the, not the very top, but near the top of the next post. So it's going to be like, dude, just a little line. Oh, okay. Okay, wow, that's it's a very thin line. To get thin lines, Ow. if you need to practice. I'm practicing. Yeah, no kidding. Use your round two. Get some paint and just do like the lightest pressure, almost to where your brush is barely touching the paper, and it's just this little line and you can see it's going to be so light that you might even lift up and have like a section that it doesn't doesn't even show a line that is okay as you can see on mine i have a little white space there i'm not even going to correct not that a real line. <laughs> ali's like that would not hold it's not a real challenge try using the round 10. <laughs> Oh, challenge accepted. No, I'm just kidding. I'm not going to do that. But I feel like we should have given a caveat. People, you don't have to do a fence. You don't have to do a fence <laughs> if you don't want to. I just, I don't even know how it was brought up in the tutorial, but I said I would do it, so I'm doing it. If you don't like it, don't do it. You don't have to. I don't want to force you into something you don't want to do. This is scary. Mm, you're a little out. You can do it. Oh, shake right. <laughs> okay, Ugh. okay, I'm gonna keep just going. Keep making these lines. They're gonna be nice, thin lines. And they connect at the same points it, on the I'm posts. not gonna complain. Just They're just gonna connect near the top, yeah. Okay. Near the top. And then as they get farther away, if you can, try and make your lines thinner. Um, yeah, and like barely there, where it's like, it's like gonna be the hint. A lot to ask at the moment. It, you know what, it is. <laughs> So if you can't do it, that's okay. But just a little touch. Barely there. Barely there. They're that, getting thicker. That looks great. I like it. If you want, you can do all things. I think I'm going to do actually a second um, wire across. But you don't have to. It's your painting. Okay. 
And you can see here at the very end, I didn't have it go all the way from post to post. I only did like a little area. And that's because as things get farther away, you're not gonna actually see the whole line. You're only gonna see parts of the line depending on where the light is shining. Cool. Great, okay, now we're gonna do our last step, which is our details. So for my details, I'm basically just going to put in um, some different um, lines within my field, because my field is beautiful, right? But it's a little bit too smooth. Um, and I want to add a little bit of change in there, because if you look at a field, there's gonna be sections where the grass is a little bit darker color or that kind of thing. We want show in the reference photo? Yes. So these kind of lines right here these areas. So I put some underneath the bushes because the bushes are gonna have shadows on the grass. And then I put some kind of in the mid, mid ground here on the field. So it's just a dark brown that I'm using. And I'm just still using my two and I'm kind of just making these horizontal uh, lines. I'm gonna make my post a little longer. I know I'm still lightening my bushes up, so. <laughs> that's, that's fine, you guys. Come back in when you're ready. I'm gonna do some kind of under here, under this front. Oh, so cute. The house itself is gonna cast a little bit of a shadow, which is why I have one by the house. You're just using water for that? Or? I'm oh, using okay. a dark brown, yeah. And then using um, a little bit of water to lighten it up if it gets too dark. No, you're fine. And then over here. And then we're just going to do a couple kind of out in this middle area. The weed is waving. So see just how by putting in these kind of shadowed areas that I feel like that gives my landscape more depth to it. It's not like it's just a perfectly smooth um, area. There's, it's grass, so there's areas that are going to be darker than others and that kind of thing. But I like to keep it more of these straight horizontal lines. Just like that. And then I'm going to add a little bit of uh, dirt in the middle of my road here. So just using that golden brown I'm just gonna do a couple, cause you know how dirt roads kind of have like grass, grass growing out in the middle of them. You yes. guys are from Missouri, yeah, you know. I was about to say. <laughs> Every day on my way to school. Yeah. <laughs> no gravel road has ever looked this good. And um, when you're doing your, your road patches, I have a little bit of a larger road on this side. I kept my patches bigger in the front and then as they went away, they got smaller, same concept as the fence, we're communicating space. Great. And then what I would do with yours, Ryan, here, if you don't mind, is that okay? Okay, so we have some great shadows going on here, but mm -hmm. they almost are kind of taking on a form of themselves. Oh, like We still want them to be part of the field, and so I'm just going to, Blend it in a bit. yeah, I'm just gonna take my brush and put them in this, like, add some little horizontal lines to it. So they're still shadowed, like but oh, they're yeah. shadowed on the grass. Yeah. They were just a little bit too defined, and sometimes mm -hmm. when you do the shadows like its own thing and it mimics the shape exactly, then it becomes its own entity, and you, you just mm -hmm. want to be clear, like, it's still on the grass. It's not like a, um, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> yeah, I get it. Okay. Yeah, that same. There we go. There we go. Okay. And now I'm going to put in my little grass. I have some little grasses here along the road and a little in the foreground of my field. So that is just black with golden brown. So it's a nice dark brown. You want to be able to see it. If it's the same color as the field, it's just not going to show up. So you want to make sure it's a little bit darker. And then I'm just gonna do some little grass tufts kind of going uh, around the fence here. So here's some grass, here's some here. And remember your grass that itself 
is going to get smaller as it goes to these fence posts, right? Because we're, it's that same idea. You want to make sure that things get smaller as they go away. And I'm going to put some grass in my road. I was wondering where you're going with that. Me? Are you sticking that grass? <laughs> what? What? Like I'm gonna put some grass in my, my road, <laughs> and just a couple little um, textures here in the front, in the foreground of my. Just a hint. We're just giving people the hint um, of texture. What color is that one? This is a mix of black and golden brown, mm -hmm. so it comes across as like a dark brown. Now remember, you know, in our heads, sometimes we think, oh, it's grass. And I know that on this field, there's, ever, there's so many blades of grass. So I'm just going to go across and do like even blades. When you do that, it's going to flatten your field. Uh, we only do sections we, because our, the hardest thing is your brain tells you what you think it sees, but you actually have to paint what your eyes see. And um, that's two different things, which I know sound weird, but it's the truth. And so um, mm -hmm. when we look across the field, we don't see every single blade of grass. We can't because we're far away. So we only see like sections. We only see the stuff that's close to us. And then as it get far gets farther away, it kind of just blends into color changes. Yes, you guys, <laughs> this looks so good. I'm done. I'm like, I'm good. I'm good to go, you guys. I survived the fence. Did you guys survive the fence? <laughs> Did you? Yeah, it looks so good. I'm trying to make some good old potholes if this is Missouri. <laughs> Pot <-hole. laughs> Authenticity is key. Okay. Are we ready to hold them up yet? Almost. Not quite. Okay, you guys have one minute. No. Finish. No. <laughs> All right. No, you can finish on your own when we're done, but we always hold them up so everyone can see. And now I need little tufts of grass. I know, I'm like, what's those tufts? This is color, right? All right. Oh, no, okay. no, no, no. Yeah, hold them up. What? You guys, you got this. Allie, I love your road so much. That looks so great. I oh, up. look at that. <laughs> like, no. And these textures right here are so nice. Oh, you guys, <laughs> I'm so happy with your paintings. Okay. Sorry guys, you gotta hold them up. Sorry. Right, I have two little tufts of grass. <laughs> <laughs> okay. He's going to you're just gonna hold him up. He's gonna he's gonna pan across. <laughs> that looks so good. Your sky is so good. I love those yeah. textures at the very top. Your sky is so good. Very cool. <laughs> awesome. Great job, you guys. Excellent. Woo -hoo -hoo. Um, thank you so much for watching and painting with us. It just warms my heart and I love it. Um, so please share your work. You can just comment on this video with it or we have a Facebook great group where you can share all of your work and everybody can see it and comment on it. It's called Let's Make Art Together. So feel free to join that, post your work. I know it's scary posting your work. It is. Um, it's a very vulnerable place to be, but you are totally brave. And when you are brave, other people want to be brave and we can all just be brave together and it's wonderful. So thank you and post that. Um, if you do it in Instagram, tag us. Let's go make art is our Instagram name. We would love to see it. Uh, next week, you guys ready? <laughs> Jill the squirrel. Isn't she so cute? Her name is Jill. Her name is Jill. She's oh. a real animal. She's got her own Instagram. She's got her own Instagram. Her owner Aww. said we could do a painting of her, so I'm really excited. Oh so the tutorial for that is going up so tomorrow. Uh, you can get the kit from us. That will be available tomorrow. Or if you are a subscriber, that should already be in your box, so you should be good to go. Um, and I do want to say for the September box, you have until the 25th to order it. That's the cutoff. We're packaging them right now. So if you're not subscribed, subscribe. If you're not subscribed, do it. It's going to be a great box. And I've started hinting at the projects inside it. And one other thing I want to say is um, the box is so much fun. Um, but there are a lot of, there's four projects in there and maybe you only like three of them, or maybe you can only get to two that month. Don't stress. This box is not supposed to be looming at you being like, 
you know, why aren't you painting? That's not the purpose of the box. So if you do at least two projects in the month, the box is worth it for you. And if you don't get to those other two, give them to a friend, give them to a niece, give them to somebody who will use them. Don't stress about it. This is all about fun. So um, just keep that in mind. This isn't, you know, crazy homework. This is just a great time to have. And I had an excellent time tonight. Thank you guys so much for coming. And uh, I loved it and I hope to see your work.